I'd like to share with you a series of horrific events from my childhood that we never had a real resolution to. There were some suspects, but no one was ever brought to justice. Also, there have been a lot of terrible things happen on my mom's property, and that's another story, but here's part of the beginning. This part of the story happened roughly around 1990 during my summer break from school, but continued on for quite some time. I must have been about second or third grade age. I grew up with just my mom. My dad was never in the picture, so we lived alone until I was about 12 when she remarried. Our secluded country neighborhood was safe for the most part, and all of our immediate neighbors were elderly, save for one couple who had a few young adult sons around my brother's age. For the most part, though, didn't have much riffraff in the area. At first, there were only minor clues to indicate something was going on, such as things being moved in the backyard. And I guess because my mother has always been a paranoid conspiracy theorist, she had an idea that something was happening. I didn't really know this until I heard her talking about it much later after the events. She tried to hide things so they wouldn't scare me. She even started sleeping in my room with me at night, probably because she was paranoid but I assumed it was because we could stay up late and watch movies together and eat snacks. One morning after I got up, I noticed that our old wooden back door had huge chunks missing out of it around the part where the locked bolt goes into the door frame. It was as if someone was trying to chip away at the locked part. I showed my mom what I had discovered, not realizing why the door was damaged, and she went completely silent, pale-faced, and panicked. I could tell something was wrong, but I was too young to understand that someone had apparently tried to break in, either in the night or when we were out. That day, she mended the door to the best of her ability, and if I recall correctly, she even put a new, different lock on it from the hardware store. She also filed a police report, but there was nothing they could do. I had a German shepherd named Munchie. He was a big, spoiled baby who loved raiding the fridge with me, but to a stranger, he was probably very intimidating. He was my best friend and very watchful over me, and I still miss him to this day. For a week or two, after mom and I would go to bed, Munchie would start pacing and whining and acting very anxious. Since we lived in such a rural place with no imminent danger, we thought, mom would frequently let him outside by himself. So one night, when he was acting exceptionally strange, she let him outside alone. We didn't have central air because our house was old, built in the 50s. We were poor, and Kentucky summers weren't really too hot anyway. At night, mom would open up all the windows in the house, with the halfway burglar latch, of course. Since she was in my room with me watching a movie, we had both my bedroom windows all the way up. My back window overlooked a bit of a hill, which gradually sloped into a low, wide bottom. The bottom was full of tall weeds and bushes. Suddenly, we heard movement in the brush at the bottom. Munchy. Then we heard him snarling like a werewolf. Mom got up and ran to the window but couldn't see anything. What we heard next was horrifying. It sounded as if Munchy was attacking someone. He was making those awful noises as if he was eating someone alive. I began to cry, terrified that something would happen to my best friend and my mom started screaming in horror for Munchy to come home. We heard what sounded like someone escape my dog's wrath and take off through the brush. Mom ran to the back door with me right behind her and called for Munchie at the top of her lungs until he came running back into the house. He was panting and grunting and bristled up. I hugged him so tight I probably nearly squeezed the life out of him. As time progressed, things got worse. Being so young, I didn't know for a long time, but my mom was safeguarding the house. She even moved a tall dresser in front of my window that overlooked the hill and bottom. She tried her best, but whoever was harassing us was finding new ways to make our life hell, or maybe try to kill us. One night, she said she heard peculiar noises coming from the backyard. I don't necessarily remember this, so I called her for details before writing this. The sounds were coming from under the dining room windows, which overlooked the backyard. She turned on the security light on the back of the house and saw a ladder propped up against the back of our house as if someone was trying to climb through our windows. This incident seemed more like an empty threat than a real attempt, especially considering the back door was probably easier access. 
We don't know if the person thought the windows would be unlocked or what, but for whatever reason, they gave it a try. Again, she called our local police and they did nothing. I should probably note that we really didn't have much law enforcement there. You probably wouldn't believe me if I tried to tell you how worthless law enforcement was and still is in that area. On another occasion, and this memory is burned into my brain because it scared me so bad, someone snuck up to my bedroom window one night. I hate to even think what their intentions might have been. Mom had drifted off to sleep, but I was quietly watching the rest of Willy Wonka. I was looking in the direction of my ominous window, the one overlooking the bottom, so I ended up getting a good look at this big, white hand which reached up and slapped my window screen multiple times in rapid succession. I screamed. Mom woke up, and the tormentor took off, no doubt through the brushy bottom. My mom is a dog person. She adores dogs and has always had lots of dogs and puppies around. We had seven little black pups and the mother dog around this time, and they lived outside on our huge property, had plenty of space to play, and a nice, big dog house. At some point, around the same time this stuff was happening, we had to be out of town for a few days. Mom had some people watching the house, and I guess she didn't really think anything horrendous would happen. Then again, she wasn't aware of how far this thing would go. When we came home, mom's puppies had been killed and lined up in a row in the side yard close to my window that overlooked the bottom. This was devastating. The police did little to help, which include telling her how short to saw off her shotgun so that it was still legal and advising us to keep Munchie in the house. I forgot to ask, but I'm nearly positive mom ended up sending the mommy dog away to my sister's house on the other side of town. Months later, Incidents were increasing in occurrence, and then someone decided to take it way too far. Something hit the back of the house in the wee hours of the morning. Mom looked out the windows and saw nothing, at least not until the next morning. She found a stick with a charred pine knot on it. Someone had apparently lit it on fire and threw it at our house. I assumed they were hoping our house would burn. And don't even ask about the cops, because they did nothing yet again. I wouldn't be surprised if they knew who the culprit was and didn't care. Then one day, Munchie went missing. He had gone out to the bathroom in the evening before bed, but he didn't come back immediately like always. He vanished. I don't even want to go into detail about it because it breaks my heart all over again, but we found him days later. He had been poisoned. To be completely honest, I could keep going with this story. Although it takes a lot of unbelievable turns, not all of them are horrifying, some are just ridiculous. Then, around 2009, a multiple year-long court case began where my mom had to fight a group of her neighbors in court to keep them from stealing her property. Those events led us to believe the people involved with that case may have had something to do with the torment we experienced all those years ago. But honestly, all we can do is assume. So, Tormentor, I wish we could meet but you're a coward who harasses women and children and hurts animals. For starters, my parents have always taught me how to be independent. I live 30-ish minutes away from New York City by train, so I was taught not to be afraid of the subway systems. I quickly learned how to find my way around New York City and my town in Jersey, I know, I know, don't judge me, via public transportation, and was always checking in with my parents, whether I was going to practice or a movie with my friends. So it was never a big deal. Anyway, a few weeks prior to the incident, the internet in our house wasn't working, and I needed the computer to finish some research paper. Since the library was closed, it was a weekend, typical of my town. My older brother took me to this internet cafe a few blocks away from our house. While there, my brother was talking to his friend Charles, and introduced us both. Little did I know, this Charles guy, he was maybe 17 years old, was about to save my life. Oh, I almost forgot an important detail. This cafe was on the main street of my town and there was a bus stop a block away from the cafe. A few weekends after meeting Charles, my friends invited me to go bowling in the city. I was 14, so obviously I had to ask for permission and was on my way around noon. We bowled, got pizza, talked about my friend's new puppy, 
typical girl things. Everything was fine until I was making my way back home. 3 p.m. There are delays with the subway system. Instead of waiting it out, I decided I could just take another subway home. It would drop me off at the Newark Penn Station and I would be one bus ride away from home. No problem. 3.15 p.m. I am on the subway and notice that this older man in his mid to late 20s is staring at me. Creeps me out, but it's nothing new in NYC. I ignore him. 3.50 p.m. I arrive at Newark Penn Station and this man sees me get up to go. He makes eye contact, smiles. He hurries behind me. Mind you, I'm a young, small girl at the time, so I'm an easy target. He's creepy, so I decided to walk fast and get lost in the crowds. Doors open. I speed walk through people. This dude must have had 20-20 vision because as soon as I arrived at my bus stop, a fast 10-minute walk, he was right behind me. 4 p.m.-ish. I'm sitting next to an elderly-looking lady at the bus stop. Creepy dude is pacing back and forth, less than 10 feet away from me. He's looking at me, smiling, pacing the floor. Every part of my young body is saying, run now, he is bad news. But there's nowhere to go. And somehow sitting next to this older lady made me feel safer. I take my phone out to text my mom. It's dead. Wonderful. Thankfully, more people have arrived at this bus stop and I feel better. There are witnesses around. He can't do anything, but he is still staring and pacing back and forth. 4.15 p.m. The bus arrives. Finally. I quickly get in and sit as close as possible to the driver. I don't know why I didn't tell the bus driver what was happening. I was young, scared, naive, and didn't want to burden the driver. Stupid. I now know. My stop is the very last one, so I thought, creepy dude has to get off of the bus before me. There is no way he is going to stay until the end. Many, many, many bus stops later, this guy is still on the bus. He did this creepy thing. Whenever the bus stopped, he would get up with everyone else, and instead of getting off the bus, he would sit closer and closer to the front. There are fewer and fewer people on the bus so I realize this guy is getting off wherever I get off the bus. This means, if I get off at my stop, he can follow me home, find out where I live, or maybe I'll never get home. 5ish PM. There are only two bus stops separating me and my house. This guy, a lady, and I are the last ones inside the bus at this point. I decide I'm getting out early because I'm not having this guy know where I live. I get off a bus stop early, he sees me and follows me. I pick up speed. He picks up speed. Fuck it. I run. He's running after me. Mid panic, I remember the cafe. It closes soon. I'm a block away. I run for my life to the cafe and this guy is right behind me. As I'm approaching the cafe, I see Charles outside locking up the place. He sees me and knows there's something wrong. I guess he sees the fear in my face and this older dude running after young me. I get to him and Charles immediately pushes me inside the cafe and locks the door behind us, therefore locking this creep outside. My heart is pounding. I quickly tell Charles that this random guy has been following me across three towns and that I was scared. He calls the cops. The guy is staring inside the cafe and I'm staring back at him, protected by the locked yet clear glass door. I had to remember him. Creepy dude smiles and walks away as if nothing had just happened. Little did I know that Charles' uncle is a cop in our town. A few minutes later, the cops show up. After describing him in vivid details, it takes them minutes to catch this creep still walking down the main street. We later find out this creepy guy had a warrant out for his arrest for armed robbery and had prior accounts of sexual assault. Had it not been for Charles, I don't know what would have happened to me that day. Thanks for saving my life. And no, this did not deter me from public transportation or from exploring the city alone. My parents did freak out and got me mace though. As an adult, I travel all over the world, sometimes alone, but I'm hyper aware of my surroundings because of what happened at 14.